working in my six by nine inch art journal. It's a creamy manila covered with lines, something you would write in bamboo covered. Bought it at a thrift store for about two dollars. I really enjoy the the creamy paper. It uh, it's not completely a white page. Pulled out some collage here using a glue stick and a credit card. You'll probably see me switching from a glue stick to matte medium. I like uh, I like using the glue stick at this point. Uh, it's got less water and I can reposition the pieces a little bit easier. Uh, it doesn't dry as quick. Here we go. I've pulled out the golden soft matte medium. A little bit thicker. Then the fluid. Got a car corrugated piece of cardboard that I trying to really flatten the grooves out of like a little bit of texture not too thick in my journal I'm fussy <laughs> Always good to have more than one piece. Kind of balances it out. I think I'm having a bad hair day. I like applying this with the palette knife rather than the paintbrush most of the time. easier to clean and I also use less product. This is some beautiful collage paper. Uh, hand dyed. This is a new tool of mine, Art Graph. It makes beautiful grays. When I wet it uh, and use it with white gesso, it's water soluble. I'm just dipping it in my water bucket. Not really sure at this point what I'm doing, just laying down some some marks. Something along the edges. Ooh, is that black?
And there's one of my favorite brushes. Very inexpensive from the dollar store. Works great for this kind of thing. Liquitex white gesso into that water soluble graphite make some beautiful grays I'm not one for white space I really struggle with white space so you won't see a whole lot of that in my work in this piece. This brings together all the background elements To make it a cohesive, oh, <laughs> here I go. Make it cohesive. Let's just take a baby wipe and some more gesso, watered down, and go for it. I love that smoky, grungy look. Greens grays now I've switched to the Liquitex matte medium here I go with a brush and I'm using this to seal the layer because the black is water soluble and I really want to just have this all sealed. A palette knife doesn't work too well there. Lindy's California Poppy Gold Spray. Absolutely love this color. When you shake it up there's there's mica flakes at the bottom. Liquitex Cerulean Blue and Basic Titanium White. I'm working on a, a craft mat. It's actually a barbecue mat. Heat resistant. Everything cleans off perfectly with a cloth, a quick wipe and ultramarine blue so I've got a cool blue and a warm blue mixed together I prefer mixing my paints with a palette knife mostly because I don't have to clean anything uh, clean the bristles out I waste I find you waste a lot of paint when when you mix with a brush so I prefer to mix all my colors with a knife and then use a brush or whatever tool to apply with at this point I'm one of my favorite tools actually I use more than a brush is my palette knife and this just these colors are just gorgeous. And the tool at hand is my finger. It's such a wonderful feeling.
getting just enough of each color on my fingers so that you can see them and they don't blend together. How many is enough dots? Kind of leaving the center area at the bottom blank so I can attach my focal point. Not planning anything, just playing with my tool. That's as much white space as you'll get out of me. <laughs> so we've got the uh, contrasting dots that have very, very um, precise edges with the blurry center. Uh, these are twigs that I twist tied from my garden. I was out pruning and thought, why not? Tie them together and see what happens. Scratching through in this, what the Italians call scraffito. I think it's a, an Italian term. That is a bamboo stick from the garden that my husband cut down and because it's hollow inside, is a beautiful mark making tool. So we've got the solid filled dots. Oh, let's accentuate them a little. some more of the California poppy gold. This is a water soluble color so I w it needs to go on top of the acrylic paints. being a complement of blue the orange is perfect color you can see the mica flakes glistening puddles the music notes just popping through Remnants of a map from a magazine. I'm in love with this background. What 
to do next? Well, this, my friends, is a wine bottle label. And I soaked the bottle and as I was pulling it off, it tore. But I actually prefer it. So I love the bicycle with the red poppies on it. I'm trying to figure out where to put it. And I'm applying some soft matte gel with a pellet knife. And there's a lot of grooves underneath. It doesn't have to be perfect, but placement is important and having it square. It's not quite see-through enough, but just a tiny bit. Ah, and there I am. I start fiddling with it and decide, no, it's not perfect enough. So I play with it for a bit. This is the perfectionist part of me. A grungy background that's chaotic with a perfectly placed label. <laughs> this is a brown stabilo all water soluble pencil. I'm dipping it in water and connecting the two pieces. I love how that lighter, lighter area underneath shines through. I'm really happy that this label tore on me. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have thought of doing it this way. And you can see it's actually activated some of the, the spray. I hope you enjoyed that.